Hello, you're listening to Count Richard von Kudenhove Kalergi. Today is Sunday, the 22nd of September, and what a change in the weather since the last couple of days. Uh, we're at 14 and a half degrees. Uh, today is what's known as the equinox, uh, which is a Latin word which means equal night. And sunset times today are around 7.04, and sunset is around 20, about half seven. But interestingly, the correct equinox for Ireland won't be until 2.45 p.m. on Tuesday, due to our northern latitudes where we have 12 hours and two minutes daylight, which is the... But, uh, so just a couple of comments this week. The first of all, I'd like to start by how saying uh, how sad I am about the passing of uh, Padder Roach. Uh, I first met Padder in Barra Street five years ago, hard to believe it's five years ago already, and he went by the name uh, Silver Fox, but an absolute man mountain of a gentleman, and uh, he had a service for him there out in Shankill, and it's nice to see some of the few, some of the few from uh, Barra Street paid their respects to this uh, very nice man, and it was thanks to uh, Ferg Power putting uh, the post out about his passing otherwise I wouldn't have known but a very nice man and uh, some some great memories from Barra Street uh, it's hard to, as I say it's hard to believe it's five years ago and including one guy that came over it was almost like a, a carnival festival of people playing musical instruments from tin whistles to bower ons and I remember there was one lady who did a very beautiful rendition of the Foggy Dew and with the acoustics of Barrow Street uh, it was lovely to hear it echoing amongst the buildings and I suppose those that were in Barrow Street I'm sure you can remember the wind that used to come down long before climate change we had uh, what you call it uh, that wind used to hurtle down that and it was very cold and uh, possibly organised by Google you know yourself but uh, last time I met Padder was actually at the Dawkey Book Festival with Wake Up Era where uh, never mind the bollocks himself, Puke O'Neill gave, uh, got a very warm welcome and uh, I can remember one gentleman in particular who in his excitement in telling me that he had uh, taken three bowls of the recommended soup for Covid, uh, nearly crashed into the car uh, in front of him but um, and also as well yesterday sadly was the funeral for Jeff Gallagher who ran in the local elections there prematurely at the age of 48 and uh, and we will honour these people by continuing on the fight against evil which is running throughout our country in so many ways you know but also I had an interesting chat with a lady during the week who was a structural engineer and designed buildings and uh, it just so happens as it was within a week of 9-11, the anniversary of 9-11, the topic of 9-11 was brought up by me. And did she believe that three buildings collapsed due to being hit by two airplanes? And she said, not a chance. So that developed a very interesting discussion on that from her point of view as a structural engineer. And I asked her on when she qualified on her course, did the topic of 9-11 ever come up as to how the twin towers could have been designed so that they wouldn't collapse and she said strangely enough it never came up in the course and uh, even as a project what could you have done but uh, so I spoke to her about my own opinion which I believe is that the, that the aircraft that flew into the buildings if indeed they did were actually drones I don't believe they were uh, passenger aircraft I think they may have been modified passenger aircraft and one of the reasons would be that during the Second World War with air combat, uh, aircraft, combat aircraft in dives came in but became to what became known as compressibility and that was to do with uh, the shockwave of, of coming into extreme uh, wind and hence the term breaking the sound barrier but compressibility became an issue in air combat and hence the design of planes then with swiped uh, swept wings to kind of cope with the strains of those speeds as you come up close to the speed of sound but the 
the maximum speed for both of those type aircraft would have been 415 to 430 miles an hour at a thousand feet so there is no way in God's holy trousers that they would have been structurally capable one of the planes is believed to have hit the building at 585 miles an hour so in my opinion the planes if they did indeed uh, hit the towers uh, were actually modified drones capable of withstanding the structures also the twin towers are actually designed to absorb the impact of the largest known passenger aircraft at the time which was the Boeing 707 which was actually larger than both aircraft that hit the twin towers and also in 19 in the 28th of July 1945 a B25 Mitchell bomber flew into the Empire State building killing 14 people and that flew uh, in during fog so it as I said this, the buildings were actually designed to absorb the impact of aircraft but she was a very nice lady anyway and I enjoyed immensely her chat and discussion about uh, the 9-11 events and what actually that led to subsequently but interestingly on the 20th of September it is actually the 10th anniversary of, of uh, an apartment building I, I saw this footage on Russia today back in the days when I actually had a television and this was a picture of um, a, a, a 20 story apartment block that was on fire but it was being bombed from the air by helicopters but I found it very interesting that it was never shown in western media because who would like to put it in people's minds that fire does not make buildings of steel actually collapse now this week also saw the RTE hit piece on the far right uh, which effectively was backfire Barry versus uh, Philip Dwyer now interestingly Philip Dwyer was found not guilty and cleared of any wrongdoing in his case regarding the crash and I think that one of the results of this case is actually the development of the ability to have somebody class themselves as a citizen journalist and that is if they can produce a portfolio of their work in, if it comes to ever being uh, in court. Now it's mind, to be mindful that RTE has been given uh, an extra 325 million from the government over the next three years and I found the piece particularly distasteful and an hour and 15 minutes of pure tedium. Also it was notes, interesting to note the same people being wheeled out including Aoife Gallagher of the Institute for Strategic Dialogue and at no stage did RTE mention the fact that at every single poll mass inward migration into Ireland tops the list of people's concerns so it really was a, a hit job and pure nonsense also during the week it appears now that Helen McEntee has decided that she isn't going to force through the hate speech legislation which to me is a complete political somersault and Earlier on this year, I, I wrote a Freedom of Information request to Helen McEntee uh, asking her, as she gave a speech outside the doll on the grounds of Leinster House, that the majority of people in Ireland were in favour of the hate speech legislation. And so I sent her an email asking her what proof does she have that the majority of people uh, want hate speech legislation. And the reply I got back was, uh, two links, one was to an LGBTI advocacy group and the other was to a citizen's format where people could submit comments as to whether they wanted it or not and of the 4,000 comments I read about 200 of them and I have to say I would say between 5 and 7% were only in favour the rest were uh, thought this was absolute nonsense and Orwellian in nature but also the fact that here we hear the term again consulting stakeholders the usual garbage one of these many of the 33,000 NGOs operating in Ireland getting six over six billion in our taxes every year and also uh, I also sent Helen McEntee an email 
in April of this year regarding Ireland, why was it in Ireland's uh, interest to sign the European uh, Migration Pact? And you'd be delighted to know that uh, I got, I finally got a reply from her five months, five months after I sent the initial, original email uh, last Friday. But also to mention in regard to the RTE hit piece, this chap Paul Collins, who's the owner of Crown Paints, um, RTE forgot to mention that he was also recipient of a bailout of 45 million. God, that car's in a rush. 45 million uh, from NAMA and, and bailout. So many of the contractors that he had hired have been stung by his actions. So he's not somebody to be. I think RT were trying to spin it and that people should have some sort of sympathy for this man. But, um, but you know, hopefully people can actually tre see through this nonsense. Also, during, we, during the week we had an incident where uh, a guard made the decision that the identity of a man accused of abduction of a five-year-old child should not be released pending the climate surrounding the incident. Now, the hint, the fact that this was actually a foreign gentleman, and I use that term loosely, was the fact that it, a translator was required and his name was eventually announced and uh, I think he's still, he's still held in police custody. But it just goes to show the absolute manipulation of how media change things. Also, I remember uh, there, a while back there was two men who had African names and they were mentioned in the newspapers being uh, two Donegal men charged with rape. So there you go. How they how they hide these things. Now just to let you know here. We're coming in through an area of the between the border and Wicklow, Dublin and Wicklow, called the Scalp, and some some massive rock formations on either side. And uh, it's also you can see mountain goats. So it's a nice place to have a walk. And normally what you would see as we come around the bend here, as you can look down in towards Wicklow, you should see. Uh, the sugar loaf in the distance but as you can see it's not very clear today and very autumnal in its in its weather although still mild a little bit of rain earlier on but thankfully that's passed and on the right hand side up here there was also allotments which uh, I think the gates are probably locked but uh, all hidden away here now also during the week um, I noticed that the independent Ireland candidate Michael Collins uh, paid a visit to the Plown Championships but you can imagine my surprise to see a picture of the man paying by credit card imagine that after him kicking up such a stink about uh, the, the Plowing Championships only taking cash uh, only taking card and no cash payments so a little bit of hypocrisy there also to mention I sent an email to Senator Jared Crockwell regarding John Waters and his recent interview with Michael Yan about the potential risk of having so many international protection sites that could be from a military point of view in a strategic location. 36 in Dublin with that number rising weekly and 293 throughout the country. That number is also uh, and I spoke to his assistant by phone and he assured me that uh, the senator will view my email with, with, co with careful consideration. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to take the right fork here and this, we're coming in towards the Enniskerry village, a very picturesque little village it is too. And also, uh, I know during the week now it was announced in Germany that electric car sales are down 60%, 69% from the previous August, which is an amazing drop in uh, popularity for the so-called electric vehicles. You know, so it's great to see that people are maybe starting to cop on that not only is the resale value of these cars plummeted greatly that any complications regarding the battery is an enormous uh, liability. Also Sweden has also announced that uh, especially for Manuel the canary in the coal mine, he hates me saying that phrase, Sweden has announced through its Minister for Trade and International Development that they're paying a man called uh, Johan Forrestal, for, it's more like for sale by the way, but uh, they're paying up to thirty-four thousand dollars per migrant, depending on the circumstances, to return back to Germany, uh, out of Sweden. Sorry.
so I'll just go through the little bends here it's a very very nice and windy route quite often there's a lot of cyclists along here so you need to be mindful of the um, the traffic on the roads but being a Sunday it's less traffic and uh, beautiful part of Wicklow you're quite close to the Paris Court waterfall and uh, when I used to do a lot of hill walking there's one of the routes I used to take was a mountain which would be on the far side of the Lencree Valley a mountain called Maulin a very nice circular route take about three hours to do and parts of the walk you would overlook the Parascourt waterfall from the cliffs so if you're ever up at the waterfall and look at the cliffs surrounding it that would be where you'll, you'll, you'll see it from and a very, very lovely walk it was too and uh, Jouse would be one of the other ones which is on the other side of the Glencree Valley but joining into over where Lugala and uh, Loch Tay I think it is where the Guinness house is so I'm just going to turn left here and drive down into the village and uh, you can see they're obsessed with ramps here as well my pet hate and uh, those eagle-eyed you have noticed may have noticed there that I'm not driving with a badge anymore I had to get rid of my old Merc uh, started causing me a lot of trouble in the last two years but it, I suppose I did have 240,000 miles on it so it, was, it had a pretty good innings but um, so there we go so here we come into a very picturesque village there in the clock tower which is now working thanks to the Disney production that put a bit of money into the and the old phone books there which I think is now I don't think it's a phone box but so there you go so there are a couple of thoughts which are my own thanks very much for listening I uh, appreciate any comments afterwards and I try to reply to all of them so if we turn left uh, right here now you'll be heading back out to Bray and in fact when we were kids we had a caravan down in British Bay and this would have been the route we took out and uh, some happy memories we had of that too so this is the road back in towards uh, if we go past the petrol station again and back in towards uh, Dublin so I'll say good afternoon good luck and uh, God bless